Wait for wait up, Phyllis Webb's Dadren's Quest, Strachem Chatstam Stakun. I'm speaking to you today from Shawetm Ulach, the land of the Shushua people in Williams Lake, BC. I'm a third generation Indian residential school survivor. My grandmother attended for 10 years from 1925 to 1935. All of Granny's 10 children, including my mother, attended for 10 years from 1954 to 1964. I attended residential school in 1973-74. We all attended the St. Joseph Mission Indian Residential School, simply called the Mission, located just minutes from Williams Lake. My son also attended the last operating residential school in Canada when it closed in Saskatchewan in 1996. To tell my story, I was living with my granny as a child and when I turned six in July of 1973, Granny took me to town to buy me something new to wear for my first day of residential school. I chose a shiny new shirt. It was bright and exciting, just how I felt to be going to school for the first time. When I arrived at the mission, my shiny new shirt was taken away. No matter how much I cried and wanted it back, no one would listen. I never wore my shirt again. Thoughts of home and Granny's garden, fishing for salmon on the Fraser River, are all memories that helped me through that year at residential school. Although the mission remained open until 1981, I never returned. I was able to attend a one-room schoolhouse just minutes from Granny's house in Dog Creek. The memories of that orange shirt being taken away and the lack of caring by those who controlled us kept me from wearing orange for a long time in my life as the sight of orange would trigger memories of my experiences and the effects of my life from attendance at that school. I told my orange shirt story for the first time in April 2013 when preparation for when the Truth and Reconciliation Commission came to Williams Lake. Those involved with the event decided to honor the orange shirt as a symbol of the effects of residential schools and the need for Every Child Matters. Originally, Orange Shirt Day was focused on the Caribou Chalcotin region, but thanks to social media, it continues to grow and have a life of its own and has grown into what it is today. My Orange Shirt story is not unique. There were 150,000 children that attended the residential schools across Canada, and they, or their families, all have a story to tell of that experience. And now with the recent news of the confirmation of the 215 children announced at the Kamloops de Shehwetmach on May 27, 2021, another experience from those schools is brought forward. I, like many Canadians, have felt the emotional impact of those findings. But for the survivors, we have always known about the children who died in those schools. This is why I say confirmation instead of discovery. Even so, when I first heard, I felt like I had lost a family member and that's how much grief I felt. There are many more residential school sites to be searched and the number of missing children and unmarked burials will continue to rise. I'm still grappling for a way to make sense of it all and wondering how we are going to get through this. My thoughts and prayers go out to the families, to everyone across Canada, experiencing this unimaginable emotional pain. The missing children have awakened all of us to the reality of the history of this country. This year marks the first year of a National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, a national federal statutory holiday on September 30th. A day for thoughts and discussions on remembering, recovering and reconciling Orange Shirt Day is a day to have conversation about all aspects of residential school. It is a day to honor residential school survivors and their families and to remember those that didn't make it. And a day to highlight progress in the reconciliation of Indigenous people and Canadian society. These actions are necessary to bring about healing for the future relationship in Canada. We chose September 30th because September is the time of year the children were taken away from their homes and their families. We chose the 30th because we wanted teachers and students time to settle in, 
time for teachers to teach students about the history and time for us to plan an event. When I heard an elder say that September was crying month, I knew that we had selected the right date. The Orange Shirt Society has produced a number of videos available on our website for the purpose of teaching the past history and bringing understanding of the Canadian residential school system and its effects on Indigenous peoples. We encourage all to learn more of this subject. In closing, I want to thank everyone for participating in Orange Shirt Day and wearing an orange shirt. When you wear an orange shirt, it's like a little bit of justice for us survivors in our lifetime and recognition of a system we can never allow again. I want to end with a prayer I wrote in my Shawatm language. Kia el khba'a de gelt gukbi, gukstach gukpin de sitk, gukstach guk de juchinuch, gukstach guk de stitlen, el de saulkwa, el de soup, el de gruselksten, gukstach guk gukweda, yukaminta rukweed de kalmuch de gruset. Gukstam, thank you for caring about what happened to us and thank you for participating in Orange Shirt Day, the first national day for truth and reconciliation in Canada. Gukstam, 